So I'm gonna just hit record. Boop. All right, we're rocking and rolling. What's up, Noah? <laughs> Good to meet you. <laughs> Tim Stodds, aka Tim Stoddard, in the house. Did I say that correctly? Yeah, you nailed it. Actually, first try. But most people usually say stuttered, and I was like, kind of roll my eyes at it. But you nailed it. Thank you. Ah. Which I don't understand because when I look at my last name, I think that says Stoddard. The way you talk, though, it's, it's you don't stutter, but you sound like a rapper. You legit, I, you sound like little Dickie's brother. <laughs> well, little Dickie's from Cheltenham. He grew up in the neighborhood next to me. I grew up. Oh in yeah, the, you guys sound similar. Are you, yeah, are you Jewish? We have like the him? same same Philly accent. Are you, are you Jewish? No, no, he's very Jewish, but we kind of look alike. I've been you guys look, long. dude, you're like the little Dickie of coffee. Uh, of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. by the way Lil Dicky even though his show is making him like really famous he's a very underappreciated rapper man he's got amazing raps I love that I love his his music um cool man well really great to talk to you I have to start off with a little bit of a uh just a token of appreciation when the virus started um I saw some video that you posted. You were like walking around in your living room with like no shirt on, basically flexing, talking about uh, just some plans that you had to be aggressive during quarantine and to like really make sure that you put your money to use while everybody's sitting around. And um, I'm sure a lot of us can relate, man. I was a little freaked out as, as all of us were thinking like, damn, what am I gonna do about my companies? What moves should I make? And I, I watched that video and I called my partner um, at least from my agency very shortly afterwards. And was just like, Hey man, I think we need to like take advantage of this while everybody is hunkering down and just be super aggressive. And, um, and we really, really crushed it this year, man. I, I just, I'm not saying Congratulations. Like, all thanks to you, but I do appreciate the vibes. Dude, I'm going to do more shirtless videos. Yeah. That's uh, that moral of the story. No, <laughs> I, I think sometimes, especially in marketing or in our businesses, uh, we get really disconnected from the outcomes. And I think that's, that's almost like the whole point. Uh, you know, when I was at Facebook, I remember we'd have like millions of users and we just look at how many new users we got each day. And I, and I was like, that's 50,000 people. Uh, or, you know, right now on youtube.com slash okay our, our channel, you know, each person I'm like, Oh my God, that's a person who's watching it. That's so cool. And I, th I think especially with online businesses, it's like, what's our revenue and what's the email address. It's like, a, there, so to hear that kind of story, man, I, I really do appreciate it, man. That's amazing. Yeah, well, it's important. Like um, everyone who listens to my show has, has probably heard this a million times, but my first online company was actually a website that helps people in sobriety. And um, it's a big resource for people that like struggled with addiction is how I learned about content and blogging and stuff like that. And so like into it, when there's tens of thousands of hits a day and stuff like that, and you're just looking at analytics and you're looking at keyword reports, you really do get that disconnect. And then every once in a while you get an email from somebody like, Hey, I read this piece of content. Like it really, really helped me. And you're like, Oh my God, you're like a person with like a mom and a sister and shit like that. And like what we do is more than just hits and, and how much emails or revenue or subscribers. For sure. Like, like there's real people that absorb what we say and it means something. It's, I, I don't know how I have a good branding for it, but it's like the power of one. And I, I've been thinking and talking about this with one of my really good buddies where all my YouTube videos is we're focused on that or at AppSumo, it's like, all right, uh, how many people bought the deal or how many people watched this, you know, our YouTube video. And the power of one is like, well, what if it was just one person who changed their life? Like the next Elon Musk or the next Steve Jobs or the next uh, Tim Stoddard, like the next person, you know, it's like, but we're so fascinated, fact fixated sometimes on how many versus the quality. And uh, I don't know, that, that, that's kind of magical. Yeah. So I, I think as a creator in any capacity, it's, you know, how do you stay close to seeing like the results of, uh, you know, you cook the dish, like maybe watch them eat it a little bit and let them get some enjoyment by their enjoyment. For sure. Um, it's important to keep that perspective. And, and I appreciate you going down that, that route with me. Okay, so I want to learn a little bit what you've been up to, man, you're kind of you got a cool thing going, obviously you've <laughs> had like huge success with your companies and you've been not just with your companies, like you've done things that I think is worthy of note because you've, you've done it in a lot of different sort of pockets and industries that like wouldn't necessarily vibe, like being a good product developer doesn't necessarily make you a good content marketer. It doesn't necessarily make you a good like copywriter, sort of speak, you know? Yeah. And, um, 
and every time I see what you're doing, I think to myself like, damn, he's got a decent podcast following. Like if I check out sumo.com, I'm like, man, there's some good copy on here. Like he's got the content marketing thing. Now you got send Fox happening. Like one, where, where are you getting the chops with all these ideas? And like, was that an intentional thing? Do you just think of some shit and then run with it? Or do you, are, are you more methodical than that? Cause in my view, it seems like you just have ideas and then just run with them. <laughs> um, I think some of my success is just cause I'm, I do. I think a lot, some, a lot of my successes, I, I think about it afterwards. And sometimes like this year, I, uh, when COVID happened, I got an RV and I went alone into the middle of uh, Terra Lingo, Texas. And I'm alone in the desert. And uh, a week later, I was in El Paso. And I was like, did I just hang out by myself in the desert for a week? Like, and it's like, you know, I, I think that there's an advantage to, to taking action. Uh, for anyone out there. It's like, just do it instead of, hey, I want to talk about this YouTube channel, or I want to talk about starting a, a coffee site. I want to talk about this, like, just go do it. And um, I think in my career, I've, I've had a lot of fun and exploring a lot of different areas that I've been curious about. And I, I, I'll tell you, like, sometimes I look back on my career, I'm like, how the hell did I, I, I thought of a, a few weeks ago, I was like, how the hell did I do all this stuff? But I, I think one, I was blessed and fortunate and lucky to be born in the Bay Area. Uh, and I've just kind of really followed my interests from, I was interested in technology always. That was always the game. But like, I got interested in Facebook because I was an RA in the dorms and all of my residents were on Facebook. And they're like, yo, you got to get on it. And I'm like, dude, I'm on MySpace and I'm on Friendster uh, and I, I don't need that. And then, you know, from there, I got introduced by Dave McClure to work at mint.com. And because that just worked out really well. And from mint, I was wanting to run my own show. And that led me to create Facebook games because I saw my buddy Amit Gupta post a Facebook app to his profile and I became the largest Facebook app developer. And so I, I think where I, I advise people and I, I'm, it makes me happy for myself is even if you're not making a lot of money or you're making a little money, at least try to follow the things that you're just curious about regardless of money. And I'd say where I've progressed uh, in present day, 20 years of working online and internet companies, I've really tried, I'm working on and practicing uh, the idea of just more consistency. So finding the thing that you're just really, really enjoying doing. So for me, it's, it's, it's content. Uh, and so it's like, all right, let's just double down this YouTube game and keep working on it year after year. I think I've had, I think I haven't done as well uh, at times because I've, you know, kind of zigzag like, oh, let's do this for a year and then let's try that for a year. And I think like AppSumo.com, which has done exceptionally well, number one site online for software deals for entrepreneurs. Uh, the reason it's done well is because I hired someone who can stick with it and just keep doing it year after year. And that's Eamon. Uh, and he's been amazing. And so I, I, I think some of the success is follow what you're curious with, but then stick with it for, I call it the 10 year rule. Like if you don't stick with it for 10 years, uh, you're not going to make a million dollars or have a million subscribers or whatever it is. But I've just seen that it takes about 10 years to get there. So that, that is the, the kind of career overlay. Yeah, man. I want to stick on this a little bit because I, I don't know if struggle is the right word. I second guess sometimes decision-making because I'm sure you can relate to this and I'm sure a lot of other people listening can relate to this. There's the concept of keep action. Don't think too much about the results. Do the next right thing in front of you. Trust the process. Enjoy the practice. You know, keep chipping away, keep chipping away. And then there's the other side of it where it's like, no, there's value to taking a step back, being methodical, like really knowing what the fuck you're trying to do before you do it. And then being like a master executor. Right. And some days I'll think to myself, like, okay, this is all I'm doing and I'm not doing anything else for the next 10 years. And I'm like doubling down on this. And then the very next day I'll get an email from somebody saying like, man, I found a really cool opening and like test prep. And like, if you give me $25,000, I think we can flip a website in like two or three years, you know, like, I think this is really cool. What do you yeah. think? And so it's kind of like that curse of opportunity, right? Where there's so many things to do. How do you pick one thing to do? But uh -huh. I don't even know if there's a question here. I'm just, I, I understand where you're going with it. I have, I have an opinion if you'd like to hear. Well, please, I, I, I'm not asking you a question as much as I'm looking for like your insight on that constant battle behind like, here's this new thing that looks cool over here. What's the time commitment? What am I sacrificing to uh, approach this yeah. new idea and, and how you struggle with that? So a few things. One, I don't have any ideas. People are no. like, oh, you know, like I'm 
our companies do well. I've made millions of dollars over the years. Like I've done well. And I'm like, I feel very blessed. Um, but I don't have a lot of business ideas. People are like, yo, you must have all these ideas you want to do. I'm like, I literally have almost nothing. <laughs> like <laughs> I got nothing. Uh, I think that's number one. Uh, it's more like, I'm just kind of, I'm happy. I think lately I've just found the thing I can keep doing. I can do for free. And I think that's kind of the, what am I doing for free? I'm like, I get to do YouTube all day. Like, and I get to talk to people like you that are doing interesting stuff. Like, and this is my life. Like, this is awesome. And uh, number two, I think there's a question about what is the best return on time? Yeah. So everyone's focused on their ROI. ROI. Well, guess what? When you die with all the money, who cares? Mm -hmm. So the point is between now and when you die with the money, what do you feel? Each of us individually have to decide that. What do we feel is a good use of our time? So let me give you an example. AppSumo.com is a, you know, eight figure company, amazing people, amazing customers, all this great stuff. I don't want to do that full time. I just don't. And I could go and work on things with AppSumo that would probably help us make a lot of millions of dollars more. But I just don't want to spend my time on that. I'd rather do YouTube where we get like 5,000 cool people watching a video or 10,000. And so with YouTube specifically, there's times where I don't feel like I'm actually getting a good use of my time. We get like 100 views or 500 views. I'm like, Okay, well, if I'm going to do this, I want to enjoy it. And I'd like to have a, a good return on time. And it's figuring out that, that balance. In terms of opportunities, the number one thing I've seen where people get messed up, you're swearing. I'm, I know you're in Nashville, so I don't, I don't like swearing to people that are in Nashville. Um, <laughs> the number one thing I've seen that when people are open to opportunities is because they don't have a clear goal. And so what I mean by that is like today, I got an uh, Instagram. Someone slid into my DMs, a dude. Uh, and he was like, yo, bro, you got to get on TikTok. I'm going to get you big on TikTok. And it's tempting. It, and yeah. it's really tempting. And, oh, and I, and, you know, and what I, I, what's helped me over the years is having very clear definitions of where I'm trying to go, at least just this year. So the way I do it is this year, our goal, my only goal, the only goal I had professionally was to get 100,000 YouTube subscribers. That was the only thing. I, if you ask me any day, it's like, if it helps me do that, I will do it. And so everything else that's not towards that direct goal just gets put in the bucket for next year. So the TikTok guy, I was like, I can talk to you in 2021 or even interviews. It's like, Hey, I want to chat with you about yourself. I'm like, if it helps me go on YouTube and grow the YouTube uh, audience. Sure. If it's not towards that next year and it'll keep being next year or no. And so I think for you, I wonder, you know, you bought copy blogger, which I want to hear a little bit about that. Yeah. But if it's like, Hey, if my goal is to get copy blogger to this much revenue or this much email or this much audience size, everything outside that scope is a no. <laughs> that sounds really great. And it sounds great for like my clarity of mind as well. I think one of my problems, um, it's like a blessing and a curse type thing is I just love SEO so much. And I just see the world through like keywords, like really, like you can know anything you want to know about human behavior, about what's cool, about what countries are doing what, by what they search on Google. It's like, it's dangerously freaky, but I find it really fascinating. And so when there's keyword opportunities, I, I feel just really confident in the ability to like take advantage of it. Right. Um, and so that's fun for me. Like I enjoy that the same way that you enjoy doing YouTube, like, I just love tinkering around on search crawlers and, and finding backlink analytics and looking for like really, really cool opportunities to take advantage of. Um, I think, let me ask, do you have a person, do you have like people around you saying no? So I have a lot of people around me saying no all the time. One, my name starts with no. So just my, 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 if you don't have a clear goal, I wonder, are you surrounding yourself? Like we have an advisor who is basically every time I talk to him, he's like, how could you 10 exit? That's all he ever says to me. He doesn't say anything else. And then I have a business partner who's like, what's working. Can we do more of that? And so I do have support and I'm surrounding myself. So I'm saying for you or for anyone else out there, do you have like your focus person? Do you have your no person? Do you mm -hmm. have your like, you know, that person to, to kind of compliment you with, if you feel like you're, you're getting distracted or open to too many opportunities. Uh, for the first time I do, I actually hired a business coach, um, which has been a really great investment, by the way, like a little sidetrack for people that may roll their eyes on like business coaches. It's, it's some of the best money that I spend. And uh, we have actively worked on saying no this year, many, many, many times um, with copy blogger in particular, like I've been a part of the company for a while and I want to see it grow. And um, 
it's a website that means a lot to me. You like, I basically got my digital marketing chops by just reading copy blogger every day. And like Brian Clark was, you know, like a real, um, just a figure Amazing. for me. Right. And so, uh, you know, I was going to do that no matter how many people told me not to do it. It was just one of those life things. It was like, I don't care what you say, I'm doing this. Uh, and so to answer your question though, absolutely. This year, um, has been way, way better in terms of saying no. I wonder a lot how much, quote, further I would be if over the last 10 years I said no more often. I'll tell you, a lot freaking further. Yeah. But the only, well, so two things. One, anyone who says coaches are, are not great, like, screw those people. Those people yeah. are not happy with their lives because you've used coaches or AKA teachers to get to where you are but somehow after school, you're like, oh, I don't need it anymore. I have a shit ton of coaches. I, I just hired a dating coach. Nice. To give you an idea. Um, and, you know, we talked about that. So one, coaches is, is, is dope. And the other thing I will say, there's, there's two pieces of sticking with that. Uh, if, if, if I'm imposing on you, feel free to push back. No, you're not at all. The two things I would say on that is, on one side, with AppSumo, we've tried a lot of different businesses. We have King Sumo for giveaway software, monthly 1K course, haul drop, fam.com, or meetfam.com, sumo.com, sendfox. Like you've heard of these. If we just would have put all that money and people and time into appsumo.com, it might be a hundred million dollar business at this yeah. point. Like straight up. If we just were like, hey, all of our energy, like so my business partner, as an example, they were working on halldrop.com, uh, which was kind of like AppSumo for products. And we were, they worked on it for a year and it was an experiment. And then the past two months, him and Justin and Eric moved into the AppSumo team. And in two months, they have done like insane amount of growth for AppSumo. Insane amount of growth. And so I do think there's something there where what is working and how do you put all the money and the people and resources into that as possible? Because I think if we would have done that 10 years ago with AppSumo, like no, no doubt of it, hundred million. But I do think there's a counter argument. I hung out with a guy last night who spent six years working on a business that just hasn't been working. And so I think the question is, if you found something working, which is not easy to always do, go with it. Uh, but if it's not working, you know, you have to give yourself some time to try uh, and have a clear delineation to be like, yo, this is the cutoff. So I think for yourself, man, like if you are saying the, the phrase I like, you know, we'd like to talk about internally is like run up the score. Yeah. What have you found that's working that you're like, yo, I'm going to run up that freaking score. Okay. And I agree with both sides of the argument tactically. So I'll give you my... Yeah, hit it, dude. Yeah, I, I told you about that original site I started. It's called SoberNation.com. And over the three years of learning about that and about um, the healthcare industry, more or less, we built an entire conglomerate of lead generation websites. The whole company is called Recovery Local. It's recoverylocal.org. Okay. And you can see all of the, the big web properties we've built. And if we did nothing but work on those websites, I, I, I can't even fathom where it would be. But then I think to myself, by expanding my horizons a little bit, there was all this other super fun shit that I got to do. Because the, the recovery local stuff, as much as I'm passionate about it and I feel really good about the people that you help and about the industry and it's like really needed, it's still really tedious, dry SEO database work. And like, oh my God, if it was 10 years later and like, yeah, sure. Let's say that, you know, we were doing 10 times what we're doing now and I can sit in a bigger house and a bigger place and everything is 10 times what it is, except my experiences. Would that have accounted for a better life? And like hindsight's always 20, 20. Right. Who knows? But, but I, I think about that as well. Like when is being so laser focused and, and linearly driven towards a goal, a detriment to like your overall quality of life. I think I've always done very well when I've had a very clear goal that I wanted. Mm. So this year I want to do a hundred thousand pushups. So I do 350 pushups every single day. And the idea of like, I want this and it's clear uh, it's been helpful. The same thing with YouTube, youtube.com slash okay door. It's like, I want to get to hundred thousand subscribers. Everything is about that. It's easy to plan. It's not easy, but I've planned it. We've had struggles, 
But like honestly, coming we're at ninety seven thousand one hundred. I was people. just gonna say you're pretty close, right? I checked it when I got damn close, dude. Damn board. close. Um, and I'll tell you, it's tough, dude. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Sorry about right. that. Hang tight. No, no, no. It's tough, dude. Yeah, this Nashville, Nashville, we got to work on getting them Wi-Fi. <laughs> Bro, you, um, yeah. you guys got great, great food, though. Yeah, amazing food. Um, but I think what's helpful is like having some goal that's really going to be challenging. I only work in one-year segments. I generally don't be like my personal and professional uh, life is pretty much always bucket list in one year. Nice. And I, I find that. And I think having clear objective numbers and then making, and it's got to be challenging has been honestly the best way that um, I found the most fulfillment in the work I've done. And let's put a little and sign on that is as you're doing it, the whole point, like, let's say you want to get a million dollars, be like, yo, I want to get a million dollars. Guess what? You get a million dollars. Your life still might suck. I know. <laughs> but, which is, I mean, it'll suck less because you're rich. Now, it'll you suck know? less, but it doesn't but, make it better. Yeah. It I hate when rich people say shit like that. I'm like, yo, shut up, rich ass. I but I think the point I'm trying to make is, it's that journey where like, hey, I'm working on SEO because I like seeing what people are doing or I'm working on health or I'm working on sharing marketing tips, which is what I, you know, I like to do on my stuff or AppSumo. So it's finding that thing that you are enjoying the fulfillment of the journey all along. Because I think, I think for many years, man, I'll be real with you. Like I've always felt that it's only when I get the goal that I'm going to be finally happy. Mm. And I always got the goal, right? Like I got millions of dollars or we got to this thing or I got this thing and I was like, still not feeling good. And so it was finally just accepting, like, are you doing what you want? Yeah, let's just try to focus each day on working on things that give you that joy uh, instead of just being such destination focus. Uh, if I may say, and this is the first time talking with you, I think you start to learn about people even from afar through what they write and what they say. Um, but you seem like personally, you're just in a good spot personally, professionally, whatever. Um, maybe that's completely off the mark, but you're... Your vibe and, and your podcast and stuff seems like you're in a good place. I, I think if I'm real with you, I think I've wasted the past three years of my life, <laughs> like straight up wasted. And it's not like, I feel like I was in a relationship where I wasted her time. And I, I, I don't know if I chose correctly. I think professionally, I wasn't really, a lot of entre entrepreneurs do this. They're like, I'm going to try the business out. Like they do like this one toe thing. And they try it out. And then if it's like, well, it didn't work. It's like, well, you didn't really try. You didn't do anything. And uh, I think with work, I was like, oh, I'll do this. I'll try that. I'll do you know, I wasn't really committed. And I think this year it was, I broke up in the relationship. And then I, and I said to myself, like, what do you really want to do? And, it, you know, finding those things for, for me and for everyone is amazing. Yeah. And it's just like, how do we put ourselves in that place? It doesn't mean every day is great. Yeah. Like Monday, Tuesday, uh, Monday was kind of like, Actually, Monday and Tuesday were awesome days, but then, you know, I have down days like, like every other human. And, uh, you know, I think at least though, I'm like, yo, am I working and spending my life around the people and the activities that I want to do? And uh, it makes it a lot easier that way. That's great to hear. Thanks. Okay. I want to transition a little bit. Um, Your show, do whatever you want. Yeah. Well, there's, I'm always very selfish in my show. Like I basically Good. try to ask questions that like I want to know. And if nobody listens to it, at least I got what I like wanted out of it. But I want to talk about SendFox. Um, Ooh, dope. I, yeah, I thought this was like a fascinating decision and it applies to me. And I'll give you a little bit of context. I'll tell you why. For bigger brands with large email lists that have to be very well organized. Um, I think there's other applications that make sense. But one of the things I remember you saying is that some of those applications are very, very expensive. And for just a regular person that just wants to send an email, like why are you paying 60 bucks a month to send a once a week email? It doesn't make any sense. And so, but then I also think to myself, Getting into the email service provider space is no joke. I mean, MailChimp does what, like 50 billion? ConvertKit is probably like 40 million something. Huge like, brand growing every day. MailChimp yeah. does a billion dollars a year in revenue. A billion. MailChimp. A billion. Crazy, and right? I think ConvertKit's 20 million. SendFox does about a million at this point a year. Well, okay. And sure, you're like, 
small fish in the pond or whatever, but even still nudging your way into the email space is, it's kind of like a silly thing to do. Like, I don't know. It, it seems like a very, very difficult market to get into. And so when was the moment when you just decided like, you know what, I think there's an opening here, even though you're swimming with like the great white sharks of the software world, let's just do it anyway. I think there's a lot of times where being naive is an advantage. Yeah. I think where a lot of people, a lot of smart people, very intellectual people fail is because they're too smart. And there's a lot of dumb people who get wealthy or have more success or fulfillment in life because they're not, well, it's not going to work because of this. A lot of entrepreneurs do that. They're like, well, I don't know. I don't know. What about that? And um, I think, you, you know, for, for email marketing specifically, I think where our advantage is, is what is, and, and this is true for every business, if you're a blogger, a podcast or software or content maker, whatever it is, what are you doing that is unique? But what most people end up doing is, oh, everyone's doing it vanilla. I'll just go vanilla. And they're like, well, why isn't it working? I'm like, well, because it's vanilla. No one wants to eat it. Mm. You got to go like cinnamon or you got to go like pho or like whatever kind of unique flavor you want to do that. You're like, you know, I'm going to do a, a Korean burrito, right? Like, oh, that's different. You don't have that too often. And so with SendFox, um, I think there's generally almost always room in markets yeah. for businesses. There's almost always, there's almost, one, there's unlimited money out there. That's a whole other discussion, but there's almost unlimited opportunity and you have to figure out where, what's your, what's, where's your place to win. And I think many people are like, let me play games I can't win versus let me go play games I'm going to win in. And for Fox, we originally thought that we could win in just being the cheapest. Uh, and I don't like the word cheap. I think it's got bad connotation. I think most affordable. Affordable. Because I was using Aweber and uh, MailChimp and I've tried them. One, I, I thought they were very complicated just to send an email. And I thought, why am I spending $500 for email hosting? Like they charge, a, it, the actual cost is almost uh, insignificant. What was really surprising though, uh, what was really surprising is that when we tried to uh, tell people to come pay at these prices, Tim, they're like, oh, we don't care that it's cheaper. No one cared that it was cheaper. I was, the only, I was one of the few people that cared that it was cheaper. And so it's been, a, it's been a bit of a challenge to figure out where can SendFox win in the email marketing space. So we've tried to make it simpler. I think we're kind of simpler, not, not significantly. Um, I think where we've had some success uh, is, is kind of targeting content creators. So how do we make it easy for content creators to create emails and, and send emails? But I, I don't think, I think we've we found some product market fit, which is, you know, but do I think we've, we've really dialed in what makes us like super unique and have a huge advantage? No, I, I would say no. That's the fun part, I think, though. That's the part that like sucks when you're in it and then five years later, it's like, yeah, you remember when we were all like sitting around trying to figure out how to do this and we thought it sucked at the time and now we wish we could go back? <laughs> That's a difficult question because we all have, you know, generally the same amount, we all have the same amount of time a day. We're all going to live, you know, relatively similar amount of years. And in this planet that we're spinning around in, it's, you know, how do we use our time effectively? And so it's nice to use your time that gets rewarded either with money or with people using it or benefits, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And with SendFox, we're evaluating, we, I, you know, I love SendFox, the team that works on it, David who runs it is amazing and all the people are so great, but we're evaluating like, is there something else we could be working on that will help more people and have a bigger upside of, of opportunity? And, and I think that most businesses, uh, I don't think they kill things enough and they probably don't experiment enough. I, and I think that's how you end up going out of business. Mm. which is also hard because we're also saying in the beginning of the show to like stick with something for 10 years. Exactly. Well, both, both is the answer, my man. Exactly. And it's such a hard thing to explain to people where I only know how to do it because I just tried so many stupid things so many times that didn't work. And then it hurts sometimes when you have to kill projects that, so for instance, I, I was building a stem cell, uh, lead gen site. I think stem cells are really fascinating. I'm really into the science behind them. Um, and it just wasn't working, man. And like, I was so convinced that there was something there, but it comes that time where you think I'm sacrificing my time on the rowing machine. I'm sacrificing like my time to sit down and actually eat without thinking about what I should be doing and just like appreciating my food and just like being there in the moment. I'm sacrificing all these little moments of just staring off into space, you know, and I'm not getting the value of my time by obsessing over this project that may work, 
but right now it just isn't. And it's, it's a tough thing to know how to do. You just have to kind of fall on your face a bunch. Yeah. I mean, I think what gets challenging as you get older is you have more experiences that keep you in the same rut. Um, you know, you're like, this didn't work before, so it can never work again, which may or may not be true. And that's hard yeah. because you get experience, you get also comfortable, like you're married, you're like, well, this is what I know, this is what I'm used to. Yeah. Um, okay, I want to step back a little bit, because you actually said something in passing that um, really caught my attention. And it's a topic that I love to talk about, because it's been one of the huge transformations for me, being entrepreneurial, you talked about unlimited money, unlimited opportunity. And I think one of the challenging things, especially about the internet, is there's so many people all saying like, hey, look at me and this great idea I have. How on earth could there possibly be space for like little insignificant me? Oof. Right? And man, that was a hard lesson for me to learn. I, I come... I mean, wasn't poor by any means, but like working class, blue collar, lower class family thinking that like my life was just going to be swinging hammers and like how on earth could I possibly be like wealthy or live in abundance, right? And as a, I guess, had more success and gotten older, you really see that there's just infinite opportunity out there for everybody. And uh, it's a difficult thing to say to somebody because you almost have to learn it for yourself to like actually get it right but i'm definitely curious about your insight on that you said it in passing but anytime somebody brings up that topic i always like to to stick with it for a minute um i mean maybe tell me more where you're coming from it's something i've thought about i'm i'm, only, I'm 38 and so i've thought about it for years where uh i thought i was trapped in middle class well is that where you, is that where you're thinking or like what, what where's your mindset at sure I, I am thinking about it in terms of like being trapped in a class or whatever like i think that's kind of difficult to define right like who says when i'm in like the next class i'm doing air quotes for all of you listening um but really what what i was referring to is escaping like that mental block of thinking in scarcity in thinking like there's only a limited amount of whatever. And so I have to like grab my piece of the pie as opposed to building something that like creates more. And that's one of the things I love about internet companies is, is there's so much leverage on them that it creates knowledge, it creates community. And like out of that, this new thing that didn't exist before is born. And all of a sudden there's a, business <laughs> there you know um you've done that many times right like sandfox was a nothing until all of a sudden it was a something and now yeah. look of all the people that are benefiting dude so many people um, you, are you using it at all no <laughs> not yet all right maybe we'll, maybe we'll switch you over we'll get you uh, upgraded i like saying that i i think scarcity and abundance mindset it's kind of like woo woo talk um it's like when someone's like, oh, you got to sacrifice, or you got to sur no, surrendering. Um, I think what's interesting about those moments, and I, dude, I'm like a very jealous, regretful, I'm also happy, but I also have a lot of like, like I, there's this house across the street from me, literally across the street. I tried to buy it three years ago and I see it every freaking day. Um, and finally, like a year ago, or, or not a year, but eight months ago, I stopped being bothered about it. And I was like, why am I now not, I don't care about that. I'm like, well, I finally have what I want. Yeah. And so I, I don't think about scarcity and abundance, right? Because I think a lot of that is like, am I just getting, I don't think anyone minds everyone getting what they want as long as they're getting what they want. Right? Like you don't mind your ex, like my ex-girlfriend, yeah. my ex-fiance, if she got a guy right now, like she got a new husband, I'd be jealous. Why? Because maybe I don't have my person. Um, but I, I think a lot of that is just like, being clear with what we really want and are we really getting our own needs met? And then from that point of view, it's like, well, I want everyone else to get what their needs are met are too. Um, because, you know, I don't want to do the oxygen and the airplane thing. Cause I think, you know, I'll put your mask on. I don't know if I believe in that. I, I think in terms of business specifically, I think there's unlimited money out there. Yeah. Um, what's fascinating to me is the experiences of when we're feeling jealousy, like, cause jealousy is scarcity. It's like, there's not enough. Yeah. So when you remember bird and lime scooters, 
No. The scooters, like scooters every on all the cities. Oh yeah, yeah of course, of course. Dude, the razors. They came out. Oh my god, they came out in Austin, and I tried to invest in them, and I was so jealous. I was so unbelievably jealous, my man. <laughs> I was like, that is the most genius idea. I can't believe it. Oh, like my company AppSumo and Sumo and all our com- all of our stuff sucks. I wish I could put my money in th- these guys. And um, it was a really great experience. They rejected me, so they wouldn't let me invest in their company. And it was a really fascinating experience to, to look back on and, and under, try to understand for me. And I think for everyone out there, because everyone's got this kind of a, this kind of same experience, which is well, what was missing in my own life. And it was like, well, I wasn't really working on what I want. And my company wasn't the company, partly mine, wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. And now that we're doing what we want to do at, at AppSumo and Sumo Group, and, and I'm getting to do what I want with our team and, and all the YouTube content, I don't, I don't give a frick what anyone really does. I'm like, I'm, yo, you're doing great on YouTube. Awesome. Tim bought copy blogger and you're running copy. Awesome. And so I think there's a lot of that. I think jealousy is a great compass to direct us to things that we want or that might be missing. So I think scarcity is more just like something's happening that's not going on in your own life. Yeah, I got to pause with that for a second because you're making me think of all of the times that, what's that phrase? Like you get, you lose nothing from other people doing well. It's just for some reason you hate to see it. Sometimes you hate to see it depending on like your, your frame of mind, but you, I will lose absolutely nothing by you doing great. And so like, why is it that when you, that when sometimes I see people doing well and it makes me think that, oh, that's taken away from me, that it, it, it triggers that, like you said, scarcity mindset. And uh, just a really interesting thought experiment for me to self-reflect on. Yeah, dude. I mean, if you want to be, if you want to go into it for a second, what's like the last, I, I'm definitely a hater. Like I, I don't, I'm, like, oh, I'm a hater. Like there's people sometimes doing better than me on YouTube. Um, like there's this kid, Graham Stevens. He's like super popular on YouTube for business. And I think what's interesting is to go into your hater, go into the person that you're hating, quote unquote, and be like, well, what, why am I hating this person? And what are they doing? And honestly, it's mostly because we're impressed. Yeah. I'm like, yo, his fucking, he's making great videos. And, he, and I'm not, I don't really follow him that much or spend that much time on it, but I think but, you know, for you, like, is, what's the last instance of this? Because I'm saying maybe we can go into it. Oh, God. It sucks to even have you ask this because. Bro, I'd I'm, love to hear it. I'm almost positive that you know him and because I really, really respect him. But it's probably Nat. I think Nat's blog is so fucking good. And I've spent so much time, like, writing really, really great in-depth content on my blog, on Copy Blogger, on all my other stuff. And uh, for some reason, having... The way that you like want a YouTube channel, I just always wanted like a popular blog. I spent a ton of time writing. You know, I really love it. I love the craft of writing. And that is such a fucking good writer. And man, when I see that he gets like a couple thousand shares on some shit that he wrote. And I was just like, oh, like you're kind of a fucking tool. But I'm only saying that because I wish that I was doing that. Yeah, (laughs) dude, that's 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 very honest. I used to work with Nat, so I, I definitely had some hatred towards him too. Now, you know, he lives in Austin and there's, you know, in our, in our uh, scarcity or jealousy, there's, res- there's respect or admiration. <laughs> and I wonder if your stuff was doing as well as you would like it to, which it may or may not be, you don't, you know, I, you may not care about him. Mm-hmm. I, I remember I, I had a friend, he's a very popular, you know, content creator, very, very, you know, well-known best-selling books, all this shit. And I was like, so jealous of this fucking guy. And then the more that I just kept staying within my world and doing the things I really wanted, I was like, that's not me. And I don't like how he does it. And like, yeah, some is good, some is bad, but I'm doing the things I really want. So I guess I I would ask that for you. Yeah. And it's funny how exactly where you say that, like at at that time, um, like more earlier in the year, I was just struggling a lot with what my message was um finding different topics to write about you know like sometimes i write about like crypto or something a lot of times i write about health just because i'm really into health and fitness and uh i was i was having a hard time really like identifying the 
the contribution that I wanted to put into the world. And I think what it was is when I would read his blog, like Matt is so confident in the things that he says and he writes, you know, it's almost like he writes like in his mind, he's already fully convinced that he knows what he's saying is like 100% factually accurate. And I think, uh, I think I've struggled with that way of writing because I, I, I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm an emotional writer, I guess you could say, like, I'm good at writing about like what I see and what I'm feeling and like, um, some cool ideas, you know, and he's a very, he's probably a more right brain person. Like he's probably more of a mathematician type, like his writing is very formatted. And, uh, and you're probably right, man. Like I saw that and I was like, damn, like I can't do that as good as him. And I'm fucking jealous about it. And, uh, and that's probably why earlier in the year, I, I'd spend a lot of time like reading his shit and just like, man, I don't think I'm on this level and it would bother me. There's a, a Steve Jobs quote that's like one of my, I have, I have a few Steve Jobs quotes that I, I honestly think about all the time. Like, you know, every month I think about this. And one of them uh, is that everything around you, I, I pulled it up, but everything around you uh, that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. And you can change it, you can influence it, and you can build your own things that other people can use. And once you learn that, no one, you'll never be the same again. And I think there's some truth to that. We're like, not, he's bright. He's a very impressive guy, but he's not smarter than you. He's not better than you. Mm. It's all made up by other humans. All right. these, everything's made up by these humans. And in this brief time on this planet, like, you know, I think we should all try to do some dope ass shit. And, and, and everyone has to define that for themselves. It could be as an employee. It could be as a, a delivery person. It could be as a cook, whatever that is. And it's just finding, um, I hate to say it, but it's almost like accepting who we are as ourselves. Yeah. It's like accepting that like, for me, I think I, until I'm almost 40 now, I'm like, oh, wow, I really like starting and marketing stuff and evangelizing. But I fought that because I'm like, oh, I got to run a company. I got to be I'm like, oh, I hate meetings. I don't want to ever do a quarterly review again in my life. That's just not my thing. So I don't enjoy it. And, you know, and Nat, Nat, Nat has his lane. And so it's Tim finding Tim's lane on your, you know, your truth. What, one suggestion I would say is that if you're writing, I have found it helpful, especially as you're on copy blogger. I have found it helpful to, to remove any... Um, deductive words like i think this is true mm. just say this is true or uh this may be the right thing no this is the right thing mm. and just practicing that kind of uh crisps your writing to be more definitive and i have noticed in a, as a marketer like that does make a bigger difference yeah. at least at least in my impression i feel like it does sure i agree that's great advice okay man so to wrap this thing up i mean this conversation are you, you want to rap we know a rap song no, I can't wrap it all. I got really, really, really wasted a couple of years ago. And I got in, well, it was like 13 years ago, probably. And I got in this really amazing rap battle that I dominated. And I hardly remember it. But since that is like my high point of rap, I made like a conscious decision to, to, <laughs> to, make, yeah, to end on the high note, you know? That was your like claim to fame. That's like, you're like Al Bundy, like, Scored three touchdowns, one game. You're still talking about that thing 13 years ago. Dude, yeah. <laughs> get on your rap, get on your, your, your rap game, my man. I can't do it. Um, all right. Well, like I said, this conversation didn't, it, it took an interesting turn. And I, Wait, we um, can keep going. I got 10 more minutes, wherever you want it to go, my man. Well, I want to know when I first started reading you and I first started checking you out, it was very like entrepreneurial business mindset, right? I, I saw it. Um, I don't know if there's a comparison, but it's just, it seemed very much on the lane. Like you want to be an entrepreneur, do what I did. Here's, here's the ticket, right? Here's the secret sauce. And I'm just sensing a lot more like self-reflection and um, experimentation in, in your message. And so we talked a lot about like clarity, you know, and about finding is like exactly what it is that you want to do. And so metrics aside and followers aside, the, the thing that you're putting into the world right now, like how exactly would you define that? Like, how is it that you're trying to help people with this YouTube channel? Um, people, it's like you, you ask people like, oh, what's your purpose? I love helping people. I like, I've never met anyone who doesn't like helping people. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> it's like, I like ripping people off and giving them bad advice and yeah. doing the opposite things of what I tell them. Um, I'll say like I, this YouTube journey this year, is, which is what I've focused on, uh, has been some of the most fulfilling work I've ever done. Hmm. And I'm very, you know, we're almost at our 100,000 goal and I'm 
man, we had a lot of challenges. We, you know, we had to let go of one of our like key, we had a key video editor, we had to let him go. Um, and it's been fulfilling as hell, man, just, just helping these people. I think that's probably the biggest difference uh, now is that I feel more connected with the work I get to do. And I get to see people's comments and I get to hear stories like yours, like, hey, I watched this video and um, it, it made all the difference. And so I, I think, with the, you know, for everyone, it's just like, how do you find the thing that gives you fulfillment? And honestly, if we had like five people watching or 50,000 or 500,000, um, I think I feel pretty damn good. And every Friday I do office hours on our YouTube show. So, you know, they subscribe to youtube.com slash okdork. I do office hours and I, it, I don't care if there's like 50 or 100 or 150 or lately it's been like 200. I'm like, yo, it's awesome to like just hang out. And these people, t I get to learn as much as these people get to learn from my experiences. So I don't have a very original question, but it, it's been, um, I think it's been amazing to find something that I'll work on for free. I'd like to do it forever. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel very fortunate that there's things I can share in my experiences in life so far. That's amazing. I'm definitely a fan. I'm rooting for don't you. Don't be a fan, just be a homie. I don't really like fans personally. Cause like fans puts you at a different level. I feel like homies, it's just like, we're all at the same level. Like we go hang out. I'm like, you know, actually it's been counterintuitive uh, that uh, I meet some of the people in my audience. I'm like, uh, I'm like, do you know that you're much smarter than me? <laughs> <laughs> the I'm like, you know, you're a lot better than who I am uh, professionally maybe personally too. And, and that's been actually awesome. And so, you know, I think just for everyone, my dream, one of my dreams is for, for everyone to find that in their own careers, whether that's corporate, whether that's startup, whether that's medical or nonprofit, I don't give a shit. So what was your even original question you were asking me? Basically just what your message is. The message that I, I, I think I'd like to share on YouTube uh, specifically uh, I call it the audience, the underdogs that I felt like an underdog my whole life. Like I felt like we, when we were talking about abundance and scarcity, yeah, me I grew too, up, man. I felt like, yeah, I grew up middle class and I felt like I worked at Facebook and I got fired and then I worked at mint and then I got fired and then I started a Facebook thing and then Facebook banned us. And then I started another thing. And then like, we got, you know, we also got sued by a, this company and it was just like, man, can I like, can I ever win? Like is someone trying to always hold me back? And I never felt like I was like always fighting against someone else. But uh, I think there's a lot of people who are amazing that need a little bit of cheerleading or need a little bit of support or need a little bit of like guidance. Like, yo, go that way. You're going the way you're going. Keep going. And uh, I love that. I love that I get to do content and office hours and things like that uh, to support. And also, mm -hmm. you know, selfishly, like I get to learn myself. Mm -hmm. I get to learn like, yo, what's working in marketing? What's, you know, for me lately, I get to meet these like 25 year old girls and guys and I'm I'm like, yo, what are you guys up to lately that I don't even know about? Yeah. And uh, just to be a part of it, man, is, um, yeah, I would say I feel very blessed around that. That's great. It's great to hear that. I feel very blessed as well. Um, Dude, tell me. Here, share more. Well, just like you said, this podcast, I started it for the same reason everybody starts a podcast, right? Like, yeah, I want to grow my brand and I want people to know me. And through it, it's just turned into like the best conversations that I've ever had. And it's with people that, How amazing is that right? yeah. And it's, it's, and that's like what I tell people when, you know, cause you get asked to be on a podcast. It's like, so what would you give new aspiring podcasters? What piece of advice? I'd be like, look, just find the people that you want to talk to the most and just talk to them. And then like send them an email afterwards and just keep in touch with them and just make them your friend. And then three years later, you're going to be surrounded by people that are going to do nothing but just elevate you in your life and give you like intellectual curiosity and like stimulation and all that kind of shit. And, uh, and it, that's why I just, it was, uh, I could really relate. Right. Cause I, I always felt like a little underdog ish and like a little less than, and then all of a sudden I just said, fuck it. I'm just going to try my best to enjoy this wild ride around the sun. And then once I started doing that, all of a sudden everything just worked a lot better. And so, and so ultimately, like what I think I'm trying to say is it seems like you're approaching your YouTube channel without taking it too seriously. And, uh, and, and I love that. And you can like feel the difference. You know, I, I will say that I think there's been times in this YouTube journey this year, and it's true for any business, whether you're doing like a, a blog business or you're doing a consulting freelancing business, whether you're doing a software business, 
uh, and, and this is the part that I think a lot of people miss out on. There's been many times this year, many, I can't, you know, weekly, where it just, we, we are not hitting our numbers. It's not going well. And I asked myself, I'm like, okay, this is going to sound really douchey and SF bro -y, but I'm like, yo, you're rich. You don't have to do anything. And I, I, yeah, I know it sounds like a fucking asshole, but I think the point I'm trying to make here is like, well, am I working on things that I, I care about? And I'm like, yeah. yeah. So I don't give a fuck if it gets a lot of views or not of views, just keep doing it. And honestly, lately I'm like, yo, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of people are like, I need to make all this money. It's like, well, you'll probably end up making the most money, just finding a thing that you're really just enjoying doing. And even if you don't make a shit ton of money, at least the eight hours a day or four or three hours a day you're doing it, you're going to enjoy it a lot. Yeah. So it, it's, it, the things that keep you up at night are the things that aren't that right. And so when I'm just doing the things that I <laughs> know that came out wrong, what do you mean? No, no, just, like what keeps you up? Huh, what keeps you up at night? Um, well, I have a very active mind first of all. So it's nice. just difficult for me to sleep in the first place. But the days that I sleep the best is when I just, it's when I, I, I won the day, basically, when I won the war of art for that day, you know, and I'm not coming at it like some motivational speaker, like, oh, like, you got to get after it. It's not about that. It's just about knowing that like, whatever I had inside of me to give and like contribute for that day, did I do it? Or did I not? And if I didn't, it just makes me feel like, oh, like there was more to share that I didn't share with the world. And 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 I think any creator is, I think any any act of creation is basically just that. It's not about the muse or like inspiration or any of that nonsense. It's just about like the thing that you have inside of you to share. Did you share it? Even if nobody saw it, you know, but like just that act of sharing it is the thing that I think makes people feel fulfilled. There, you know, I, I would almost, I wouldn't, I'm not arguing with it, but I think that what's been fascinating for me this year to experience is that there's many days where I have a checklist of like, what makes my day fulfilled? And it, you know, a lot of it's, it's not, nothing's rocket science. It's like, all right, did I do some exercise? Did I eat healthy? Did I learn something? Did I get a flirt or have some, you know, something like that? Did I create something? And I'll say there's days where I've completed my like fulfillment checklist of the day and I still feel like crap. Hmm. And there's days where I don't do the checklist and I feel great. And that, that, I think that's called life. Yeah. But I, I, I would if you say, figure that one out, man, like. <laughs> I'll put it in a course, 1995, you can buy my course. I, I think the point with that, though, is that, you know, try to be as intentional as possible with your days. So if you, for you, Tim, it sounds like sharing is important to you and it makes you feel good. Yeah, yeah. Try to make sure you're doing that every day. And some days it's not going to always work out, but at least you can do as much of that as possible. Totally. Sorry about that. My dog just. <laughs> Who's your dog? Your dog's here? Your dog's here? Uh, she's not anymore. She ran back out, but she, once she figured out how to open door handles, it was just all downhill, man. <laughs> Dude, that's cool. I mean, that sounds like a YouTube channel, like dogs who open doors. Have you ever seen, uh, that, that guy's YouTube channel where he figured out how to mix paint really well and got like a couple hundred thousand followers and then. Oh, is this the whole drama he got fired recently? Yeah, he got fired. You can make cool YouTube channels about anything. There's so many like amazing creative people out there. Um, all right, brother. I'm I'm all set. I really appreciate Dude, talking to us. Do you want to try it here? Do, let's do a freestyle. No, you're not. <laughs> you are not getting me. You are more than welcome to freestyle. I, know, I need a beep though, or something like that. Uh, all right, Tim Stodds. He's coming to you from live in Nashville. He's not gonna be <laughs> ill. He doesn't even want to let some rhymes out. But uh, he's listening to Grimes because Elon Musk is dating her. They're about to go out. Uh, I don't know. I don't really. Think <laughs> yeah. He's got Model Y, but no, he's not into Tesla. He's just in that stock. He's on Robin Hood. He's trying to get rich. You know it's good. Not Robin Hood. No way. You ain't gaming my stock. No fun. Oh, that was good. That was good. <laughs> Yeah, Robin Hood makes me really anxious, man. It's not for me because I don't participate in it. It makes me anxious for all of those kids that are like swiping buttons with balloons and celebration, not realizing that they just burnt like eight grand in, <laughs> in stocks. You know, you only, you only see the wins. You only for see sure. the wins. But I will say some of the funniest things I've ever seen online, if everyone wants to like, if you're in a bad mood, and I always have to remind myself this because I go through moods, you know, human. 
uh, go to reddit.com slash r slash wall street bets and then read the post. They are so funny, man. Like when I was, uh, some late nights this week and last week I go to Reddit on, uh, some wall street bets, dude, these people have some real good humor. The internet is amazing with memes and, and just silly Reddit posts. I always wonder where these people are and how are they not comedians or, or whatever, just internet meme lords that are hiding in some like dark hole of a living room. Well, you have to think about it. You know, we talked about it earlier on. It's like, they're not doing it. I think one, they're probably having fun. So it's not even said that, but if they want to be a comedian, like I, I'm actually fascinated with people. Like what am I, I'm always fascinated when people work on something without making money for many years and then they get rich. Yeah. And so a comedian is one of those, um, and you know, them, it's like, yo, you're going to try to do this comedy thing. Or you're going to be an author. Like a lot of times that's not going to work out for a very long period of time. Uh, and then eventually, and it's just like, well, how did you do it? It's like, honestly, I just loved doing it for sure. So for me, like I've been blogging since 2000 and I'll say every time, you know, what? I'll tell you, Tim, in the back of my mind, every time I say that, because my blog, go to archive.org, archive go to okdoor.com. It's been since 2000. And every time I say that in the back of my head, it goes, well, why aren't you more famous? <laughs> That's what Noah says to Noah every time. So one, be nicer to yourselves, all of us. Yeah. But two, it's like, you know, have I really put in the work in those 20 years to be at the level uh, that I, I think I, I should be at? And it's like, I don't, I don't really think so. I think yeah. this year I've put in the work. And it's like, yo, you want, want it? Well, find something you enjoy, which I've enjoyed it for 20 years, and put in the work, and then you'll get the rewards. I think people want to just like put in the microwave. <laughs> trying to like put it in the microwave just get it right away it's like mm. it's not gonna happen it's not like uber it doesn't just come yeah agreed and i appreciate that because it remind it, it just makes me feel good that hard work is like the fairness in the world right because Ooh, if yeah if you could just get shit that'd be so lame and so when you it wouldn't be like it'd be awesome but it, it's not as it's not as rewarding yeah, but it also wouldn't be awesome because then all of a sudden everybody would have it, right? And so then it just wouldn't matter anymore. And so when I see people work hard and you see that, that you know, like pull up your bootstraps, whatever thing actually come true to somebody that's stuck with something for 10 years or something, and then it works. And it's just like a reminder of like, oh, wait, hard work and dedication and like discipline is actually something. Um that, that makes me feel like relieved that it wasn't just some like hoorah speech that my dad used to give me when I was a kid, you know? Um, I think sometimes there's, you know, there's two ways of approaching life and business. It's sometimes it's nice to know how long it takes to be successful, yeah. right? It's nice to know that, Hey, if you work on YouTube or you work on software, you work on blogging, you work on email, whatever it is in 10 years, you're going to be rich. But on the other hand, it's like, well, if it's up, it's damn, it's like, if, I, if, I get, if I'm going to know it's going to take 10 years to get rich, why not? You should probably just start today. But mm -hmm. you're like, ah, I may not want to start. So I think there's also a beauty in naivety. Mm. Na na naivety. It's a cool naivety. word. Yeah, man. All right. Um, I got to check out of here, brother. It was really, Dude. really great talking to you. So we got youtube.com slash okdork. We got okdork.com. Um, AppSumo.com, number one side line for marketplace uh, for uh, for entrepreneurs. What about you? What's something you want to plug? Your show, man. Just Copy Blogger. That's where I'm at right now. Um, How are you gonna get Copy Blogger back to its like glory? Copy Blogger. I mean, when I started internet blogging in 2000, like Seth Godin, Duct Tape Marketing, John Jantz. Uh, I mean, you know, Copy Blogger. I mean, dude, he was Brian was like the, the king. So what, what's your thought? Well, I think it's actually pretty simple. Um, it's very, very, very difficult to get a backlink profile like Copy Blogger has. So if I'm strategic and methodical about the keywords that I go after, I think I can rank number one or number two for just about anything. Um, I mean, it's like almost 4 million backlinks to the site. And there's no, there's nobody uses RSS feeds anymore. So it's just <laughs> difficult to do that. Like you can't really Kids don't do even that. know what RSS is. Yeah. Like you just can't do that anymore. Um, so what's too, your thought to, what's your thought to uh, get it back to that level? Well, or it's at that higher. level. Yeah. It's already at that level. So, um, 
So it's great to have that backlink profile to work with, but I think more importantly, it just has to go back to being about the writer. You know, Copyblog has been on such a journey, Studio Press and like Rainmaker and software products. And like, you know, sometimes things just veer off a little bit, but the people that come to Copyblogger still to this day and all the email subscribers that we get and all the people on the email list, like they all want to be better writers and they all want to learn copy. And it's like, no matter how big TikTok gets and no matter how crazy virtual reality gets, I just believe in my heart that we're still going to read words and the people that are really, really good at formulating those words to convince people to do things yeah. are always going to be the ones that are like very highly sought after. So um, it's simple, man. It's just going to be good SEO and it's going to be focusing on serving the writer. And uh, I'm, I'm excited for the journey. It's like crazy, you know, it's, uh, it's big money, right? But um, I, I'm an obsessive person. And so I'm just very, very confident that I can do this. That's a big, I mean, it's a big order, man. And, you know, sometimes like, I think with a lot of life, it's like we regret the things we didn't do, but we don't as much regret the things we did do. Yeah. So it's just like, if you're going to live this one life, might, might as well go for it. Yeah. What's the worst that'll happen? Like, worst, I mean, if it's not death, then you'd probably be all right. I'll be all right for sure. And, um, and, it's a, it's got good revenue. It's a healthy business. So it'll take two years maybe, but, um, but it's going to be great, man. You can help me out. Just make well, sure you're hey, signing up for the job. Yeah. What am I yeah. doing? <laughs> All right, brother. Let's uh, rock it out. I appreciate it. Nice chat. I mean, it's uh, you know, it's a journey of the internet going to be doing this. I, I think it's something about the internet world. It's like we do this for another uh, 50 or a hundred years. So we'll, we'll be seeing each other. I appreciate well, you having me on here. I hope so. And Austin is for sure um, on my list to go as soon as, you know, I'm like allowed on a plane again. So uh, when this is over, man, I'll definitely come to Austin. I'll hang out with you. I'll hang out with Nat. I'll let him know about how he used to fucking stare at him and, and resent his blog or stare at his blog and resent his blog. <laughs> and we'll get some good laughs about it, man. So uh, I really appreciate your time, Noah. Thank you so much. All right, brother. I'm going to rock out.